Okay, hi, good morning, one and all present over and observing in the online, respected sir, madam, my dear friends. I am Kiran from the Department of Floriculture and Landscape Architecture, bearing the ID number MS2T80188. I am presenting my second seminar on orchids. Welcome to the world of orchids. Orchids, these plants surprise us every time due to their unique way of adaptation of floral structures to attract the pollinators and their symbiotic association with the orchid mycorrhizal endophytes. During my course of exploration program as a part of my research work, I have seen many native orchid species distributed in every possible way in the nature, but except a few. I discussed with the orchid experts regarding this, why the species like Dendrobium herbaceum, Dendrobium macrostachy distributed in a wide range in contrast to that, the species like Vandath White Sea, Cotinia pendanclaris restricted to the particular range of the forest ecosystem. Why it's so? They replied that this species, uh, this, may be for, this may be due to the several reasons like the presence of suitable microclimate, the presence of suitable host, the presence of suitable pollinator, the presence of orchid mycorrhizal endophytes. Here, these factors will enhance the orchid species to distribute well in the wide range of ecosystem. If any one of these factors is missing, this may lead to the orchid species to rarity, endemism or restricted, to restricted distribution in the ecosystem. Among all these factors, the orchid mycorrhizal endophytes play an important role starting from the seed germination till the death. This, this was interesting. So to explore this association, I took up my second seminar on insight into the symbiotic relationship between the orchids and endophytic fungi. My seminar flow goes like this, starting with the history, some basic concepts and brief in, brief introduction to orchid endophytic fungal, then diversity, then role of endophytes, finally conclude with conclusion. Then coming to the history. This mycorrhizal association is an important phenomena that merged during the course of evolution. Indeed, it helped both the plants and microbes to survive well. In 1892, the Feroze Key stated that the fossil evidence suggested that this relationship existed over 400 million years ago in the tissue of first terrestrial orchid plant. Then, Dr. H. Waldich studied orchid mycorrhizae, describing that they are universally associated with the family Orchidaceae. Then later on, the Noel Berner first proposed the orchid symbiosis in 1899. Then, the initial groundwork was on the orchid mycorrhizal fungi, indicating that the only rhizoctonia species will have the association with the orchids. Later on, the, there are number of fungal species were identified and uh, later they are collectively termed, uh, collectively termed as rhizoctonia like fungi due to their resemblance in many aspects to rhizoctonia species. Then, in back in 1982, American botanist Louis Knudsen discovered that the orchid seeds can be grown on the nutrient media without these fungal endophytes. He demonstrated on the potato dextrose agar and cornmeal agar successfully. Then we will see some basic important concepts like, like uh, orchid roots and velamen tissues. The orchid roots are the system of orchid life forms differs in the several aspects. The roots of epiphytic, lithophytic orchids are ecologically similar as their roots were exposed to light and air. The aerial roots of epiphyte and the lithophytes are perennial. They are photosynthetic and fairly constant growth throughout the year. In this photo, you can observe the green photosynthetically active roots of Vanda orchids. Then in contrast to that, the terrestrial orchids, terrestrial orchids are usually non-photosynthetic. They have the limited lifespan of up to three years and show seasonal changes in the growth and architecture of the roots. The roots of terrestrial orchids are grouped into mainly two, that is mycorrhizal and non-mycorrhizal. Mycorrhizal means they have the association of mycorrhizal. Non-mycorrhizal means the lack of mycorrhizal association and they will have the more of xylem and more amyloplast in their tissues. 
but the most of the terrestrial orchids possess the mycorrhizal fungi in their roots even in the adult stage of their life cycle then terrestrial orchids show the high degree of high degree of diversity of the fungi they show the association of high degree high diverse fungi likewise the epiphytic orchids were colonized by the diverse group of fungi they will associate with the diverse group of fungi then we will see the another important concepts uh, uh, that is uh, that is um, development issues the orchid have the multiple epidermis consists of several several uh, several layers of thin walled cells called velum this velum will help the roots to trap the water and nutrients the roots of epiphytic orchids have the more layers of velum than the terrestrial orchids because the bulbs are the nutritive structure in the uh, nutritive structure in the terrestrial orchids then epiphytes growing in exposed environment will have the multiple layered velum as in case of acampe it's a dry uh, dry land species which have the more prominent uh, prominent velum tissue compared to the bulbophyllum which is a humid environment orchid species then the orchids which are lacking the chlorophyll are called as a chlorophyllous orchid species and mycoheterotrophs means they are completely depend on the fungal endophytes entirely entire life of the plant this will helps in the further discussion uh, for the discussion coming to the next concept nature of endophytic fungi how they be behave in the nature the orchid roots are colonized by diverse group of fungi some of which may not be true mycorrhizae in the nature in endophytic in endophytic fungi should have the, when when we will call the true mycorrhizae means it should have the potential to stimulate the seed germination enhance the protocon development and early seed seedling development and subsequently improves the growth and reproduction of the adult plant then the fungi forms the peltons in the root cortical cells then these peltons were the special hyphae which interconnects the fungi and the host this extent of colonization is controlled by the orchid itself in this picture you can observe the morphology and the mycorrhizal anatomy of the different orchid roots in this picture you can observe velum and roots of uh, dendrobium species and the velum and roots of acampes species then exodermal cells in the aerial roots of acampe then bilayered velum and tissues and exodermis and in this picture you can observe the fungal hyphae penetrating into the seeds of orchid that is dendrobium orchid in this picture the well established fungal network forming the peltons these are the specialized structures only observed in the mycorrhizae fungi in this picture you can observe the digestion of the peltons the uh, the digestion of peltons the content of the pelton is dissolved or digested in the cells of roots then one the one way through which the orchids obtain the nutrient from the fungi is through the digestion of these fungal hyphae in the orchid the digestion of this fungal hyphae will takes place in two uh, mechanism one is tolophagy and phytophagy tolophagy means this is complete digestion of peltons phytophagy means the partial digestion of fungal cells the contents were released into the plant system then this mixture of solution is called as fungal elicitator this fungal elicitator will help further colonization of these endophytes and promote the development of protocons and the seedling several fungi that exhibit the differential response as the parasite and the pathogen are also seen to be symbiotes in the orchids the parasites and the pathogens in the other orchid species may also occur as the symbiotes in some of the species for example ceratobasidium it stimulates the seed germination and seedling growth in the hypnopsis orchid species but the same fungi isolated isolated was shown to be pathogenic in dendrobium orchid here we have to see the internal mechanism of the plant towards the reducing or tolerating its pathogenicity of the fungi this is the future of disease management strategy in the plants 
in upcoming days you have to think of it then we will see the next concept orchid endophytic fungi how they will attract the endophytes many many researchers are interested in how the plants were able to recognize the compatible or even the beneficial partners among the vast pool of diverse microbes present in the nature the decades of research has been discovered that the fine tuning and the molecular coordination between the plants and the microbes is the key factor for the coordination during the process of evolution then this orchids fascinate not just the humans and pollinators but also these microbes when it secretes the holotoil compounds that gives off a strong aroma it has an ability to attract the beneficial microbes by directly or indirectly in this in this table you can observe jotma and coccus in 2013 reported that the presence of different bacteria and the fungi in the floral nectar of epipactic orchid epipactic orchid because these orchids will secretes the different volatile compounds which attracts different fungi and bacterial beneficial bacteria and fungi then further the mendel and coworkers in 2010 reported that the flavonoids are the signaling molecules which are responsible for the microbe and plant interaction further the phenolics also works as the signaling molecule for this coordination and some genes like chitinase synthesis CHE genes may also regulate this symbiotic association according to Lanfrasco and Coercus in 1999. Then involvement of genes which encodes for the glycerol dehyde 3 phosphodehydrogenase it is also important to regulate the symbiotic association. At molecular level some signaling molecules are required for the plant and fungal interaction which is reported by Pedersen and co-workers in 2013 but one interesting case study was N and the co-workers in the 2014 reported that in Oncidium orchids the presence of micro RNA, the plant fungal interaction between the Oncidium and its endophytes helps the signaling regulation nutrient supply and production of the plant hormone in Oncidium orchids here you have to think of it how how intelligent these orchids and endophytes are then coming to the another concept colonization how they can able to enter the plant system this is also a big question the fungal colonization patterns significantly differ from epiphytic lithophyting and terrestrial orchids but all of these type of fungus enter the roots primarily through the root hairs and occasionally through the epidermal cell. In epiphytic orchids, the colonization occurs only at the roots attached to the substrate. Hence, the colonization in epiphytes is patchy. Then the fungal hyphae enter the root cortex through the passage cells of exodermis. From the exodermis, the fungal spreads throughout the roots, forming the highly coiled structure called pelton. This structure is differentiating character of orchid mycorrhizal fungi. This is unique in only orchid mycorrhizal fungi. This mutualistic fungi can enter at various orchid stages. The IFA can penetrate the parenchymal cell of germinating seeds, protocomps and seedlings. Then, but at the protocomp stage, the IFA can enter at the chalazal end of embryo. Top of the embryo, it can enter the fungi. Then, the colony of, then they colonize the internal plant tissues, especially the velamen layers filament layers and cortical cells without causing any harm to the host without causing any harm here you have to observe without causing any harm it is possible yes it's possible that the mycorrhizae may involve the fungi that are pathogenic or other pathogenic to other plant species here we have to understand the orchid's specific ability to neutralize the possible virulence pathways of the pathogen. These factors render the orchids as an excellent model to study the plant fungal interaction, how it can able to reduce the pathogenicity, what are its internal mechanism which supports this. This knowledge could provide an idea in developing the new strategies to overcome or reduce the severity of the pathogenic interaction in non-orchidaceous plant species. Then moving on to the next concept, orchid endophytic fungal diversity. We will see the diversity, the presence of 
suitable fungi, different environmental factors like soil moisture, relative humidity, temperature plays an important role in growth and development of every orchids in nature. The orchid endophytic fungal diversity could be divided into mainly two types based on the ecology and photosynthetic ability. Then the diversity of the terrestrial photosynthetic orchids we will discuss first. Terrestrial orchids are generally colonized by the fungi belonging to the five different groups. These five different group of fungi were associated with the terrestrial photosynthetic orchids. The endophytes associated with the photosynthetic terrestrial orchids is generally low due to their high host specificity. Terrestrial orchids are mainly host specific. These fungi were host specific in terrestrial orchids. Then these fungi gain the energy from the organic matter in the soil, litter, tree bark or the rock surface. Then we will see the diversity of epiphytic orchids epiphytic orchids then in epiphytic orchids the low level of patchy mycorrhizal colonization could be seen in the roots attached to the substrate or the bark of the tree but they will associate with the broad spectrum of mycobians in the nature they will associate with the broad spectrum of mycorrhizae in the nature you might have been confused with the orchid endophytes and the mycorrhizae i am using frequently these two words first i will uh, clear these two words. The endophytes means it's a broad word comprised of all group of fungi but mycorrhiza means it's a group typically belongs to the basidiomycetes phylum. Mycorrhiza means basidiomycetes phylum. Endophytes means it's a general word. Then in nature there is no hard and fast rule. This fungi has to associate with only this archaea, this fungi. No, not like that. The different fungi may associate with the different orchids at different stage of development. In this table, you can observe the many research, the many after the many researchers, after the many research work has been conducted, uh, they have reported that different mycorrhizal fungal taxes were associated with the different orchid species. In this, you can observe the Duke Cruz and Coworkers in 2018 reported that the Ceratobacidium clone is host specific to Vanda White Sea, like this the many scientists has been reported then we will see how to isolate how to isolate and identify these endophytes first how to isolate we will see how to isolate means we, first we have to collect the sample from the nature or the forest system after that um, we have to isolate the roots then go for the surface sterilization then make into the root segments cut it into slices observe the presence of fungi are the peltons. These peltons were inoculated into fungal isolation media and then further subcultured in the potato extras media. Then these fungal growths were usually first identified through morphological methods that is the presence of mycelial structures, spores and different colonization pattern, color, all these are the morphological structures. These are all morphological structure. If you, this is traditional method. If you want more accurate way, go for the molecular method. Molecular method, first we have to isolate the fungal mycelia and go for the pure culturing and uh, we have to isolate the genome DNA, then go for the amplification of ITC region by PCR method. ITC region means internal transcribed spacer region. This will be unique in all the fungi. As like in human, the 99% of the genome is same in all the humans but only one percent of the genome is different as like the itc region in the fungi is unique in every fungi so this uniqueness is tapped for its identification then further sequencing has to be done then the sequenced nucleotide were compared with the existing database of uh, ncba website using the blast search tool technique then we have to go further creating the phylogenetic tree. This is the general procedure of isolation and identification of endophytes. And in this table, you can observe the list of endophytes isolated and identified in the orchids that can be used as a biological tool in micropropagation of orchids. Till now, more than 28,000 of orchid endophytes have been documented. Till now, 28,000 species has been documented. 
Augustine in 2016 reported that the presence of rhizotonia species in dendrobium lancifolium it helps in the seed germination. Like this, many scientists have been reported that different fungal endophytes in different orchid taxa and their role in the seed germination, seedling growth for the protocom development and in ex vitro survival of the plant. Then, then moving on to the next, the importance of endophytes. Importance of these orchid endophytes. Mainly, they are important during the symbiotic seed germination. In 1899, the Burma first described the role of these microbians in the orchid seed germination. Generally, these orchids are minute with a small embryo without any endosperm. Therefore, the association with the fungi is prerequisite for the orchid seed germination as well as the germinating seeds are incapable of obtaining the nutrients successfully so they depend on the fungi. Hence, understanding on the specificity of this fungi-orchid interaction is crucial for crucial important both for the ecology and for conservation. The seed germination protocol development seedling growth are stimulated by the digestion of these fungi. Here, here is a role for success. If you want to establish in the larger population in the nature, you associate with the broadly distributed fungi. For example, in, the, in for example, if you want to reach the mass population in India, you give an ad in the Hindu newspaper. So you will reach the you will reach throughout India. Like that, if you want to distribute larger in the nature, you associate with the broadly distributed fungi. Then in contrast to that, a narrow specificity could be a reason for rarity or vulnerability of certain orchid. Hence, the use of these endophytes is a promising factor to overcome the challenges faced in the in vitro plant production. That is, uh, high mortality rate, poor growth or poor human. These are the important lacunas during the uh, in vitro condition. Then, then we will first see the first case study that is uh, Kam Chatra and co-workers in 2015 conducted a study on symbiotic seed germination of an endangered lady slipper orchid Papilophyllum velusum from the Thailand. The study was conducted at Cascade University, Bangkok. This Papilophyllum velusum is a rare endangered epiphyte restricted to Assam region of India, Myanmar, Thailand. And the probable reason of this rarity is low natural seed cell that is only 8% is seen in nature and over collection in the wild. Hence it has to hence it has been put under the ban for the trade under the sites regulation. This will look after the international trade of endangered species. The present study was aimed to evaluate the asymbiotic seed germination and protocol development to provide a benchmark for assessing the performance of endophytes, then to isolate identify the associate endophytes. Then to determine the efficiency of these isolated endophytes is a in promoting the seed germination and protocol development. So the results obtained will help the future orchid conservation and reintroduction program. In this research, initially the researchers collected the plants from wild, the capsules were inoculated in the three basal media to test the asymbiotic seed germination. It means without the use of any fungal partners. They used three media like uh, MS media, vaccine and vent media, tomology media. Approximately 100 sterilized seeds were inoculated. The seeds didn't germinate well in these media because the researcher says that the probable reason may be the fungal specificity. It needs endophytes. So they conducted another, another experiment for that. They collected the roots of Papilophyllum velusum, rinsed surface sterilized uh, using the sodium hypochlorite. Then the thin solution, thin root segments were made and observed under the stereo microscope. The presence of the peltons was seen. In this picture you can observe the presence of peltons on the roots. This shows the need of fungus in the adulthood of adulthood for the growth and development of growth and development of this fungi. These peltons were inoculated in the fungal isolation media further subcultured in the podiodextrose agar initially they identified using the morphological characters then they gone for the molecular characterization using the itc region why itc region i have already told you itc this is a unique in every fungi so this uniqueness is tapped for the identification of the fungi 
then the genome was extracted using the cetyl methyl ammonium bromide method that is usually we call ctab method then the gene is directly sequenced for genome the obtained nucleotides were comprised within the existing they are compared with the existing database of japan using the blast search tool technique the seven endophytic fungal isolates were identified and the six fungal isolates belongs to the basidiomycotin of fungi while the remaining one belongs to the ascomycotin of phylum in this figure you can observe the different morphological character of two endophytes that is tulsnella species and the ceratobasidium species you can observe the monolith cells of the these two fungi cultured on the protodextrose agar then in the table number 2 you can observe the molecular identification of these seven endophytic fungi isolated from the wild papillophyllum willowsome plants these are the isolates given with the unique id names then accession number and the identity these are the 99% and 95% means this is the similarity of the fungi nucleotides compared with the existing database this sim this percent of similarity was seen for example the blast search tool indicates tulsnella species this species this accession 99% was similar with the tulsnella hence it gives the result tulsnella species with the this unique id number this unique accession number which is saved in that library then um, then some of these endophytes some of these endophytes were reported to be were reported to be root rot causing fungi and capable of phyto pathogenicity it means causing a uh, disease in the plants you can observe how they can able to associate with these endophytes it internal mechanism we have to think of it then further to test the efficiency of these isolates isolates they gone for the symbiotic seed germination in in vitro condition sterilized seeds were spread on the oatmeal agar media with a fungal inoculum here the uninoculated plates were used as the control the percent of seed germination in the program development was scored on 1 to 5 incremental scale in this table you can observe 0 means no, no seed germination 1 means embryo swollen 2 means continued embryo enlargement, 3 means appearance of protomeristem, 4 means emergence of first leaf, 5 means further elongation of first leaf and further development. Then in this pic, in this uh, table you can observe the effect of basal media and 7 endophytic isolates on the germination and development of papillophyllum. The 3 basal media didn't respond well and the, even the single seeds were not germinated because of the fungal specificity, in need of fungi. Then, in the they have inoculated the for the seven isolates in this the tulsnella responded well about a, a 28 percent of germination rate index was seen compared to the other and about 10 percent of the development and developmental rate index was seen compared to the other then in this picture in this figure you can observe the symbiotic seed germination and the program developmental stages of papillopidulum inoculated with the fungal isolate uh, that is still snail cultured on the oatmeal agar this stage is zero zero means no germination that testa is intact in stage one means this is the embryo embryo enlargement and testa rupture means here the protocom protomestum then emergence of first leaf then elongation of first leaf then colonization colonization of the fungal isolate then you can observe here the first true leaves the seedling grown on the oatmeal agar media the further hardened and acclimatized in the uh, acclimated in the natural condition using the vermic vermiculite peat moss and sand as the potting mixture then what is the inference from this study they concluded that the papillophyllum seed germination in the protocom development needs high degree of mycobian specificity so if loss of one species one fungal species in the nature may lead to the failure of the plant establishment then moving on to the other important concept role of endophytes in nutrient transfer here the proper growth and development of any plants the nutrients are required hence the mycorrhizal association helps the plants to uptake the minerals like carbon nitrogen 
nitrogen, phosphate from their hyphae. In this picture, you can observe. In this picture, you can observe the symbiosis relationship will helps the nutri will helps to uptake the nutrients like carbon, phosphorus, nitrogen, iron. And this microbial association was seen in the roots of the orchids. And these microbes will also secrete the secondary metabolites. Uh, for metabolites, this will helps in the uh, this will helps during during to withstand the biotic and abiotic stresses, and it will help the or boost the human system of the plant. Further, in the epiphytic orchids, the orchid mycorrhizal fungi decompose the organic matter such as bark and make available the nutrients to the orchids. But this nutrient transfer is unidirectional at initial stage of seed germination. But later it attains the bidirectional stage when, it, when the plant gets photosynthetic stage. Then this fungi association involves the plethora of distinctive nutrient transport system structure and this phenomena is only been observed in the orchid mycorrhizal fungi and this nutrient transfer mechanism and the symbiotic mycorrhizal peltons organs will start to appear after after the infection of 20 to 36 hours of initial contact to roots here the genetic upregulation and downregulation will facilitate the nutrient transport so the initially fungus will enter the root cortical cells and establish its peltons. These peltons were not the permanent structures. They are readily degraded and digested within 30 to 40 hours of the formation of the orchids after the formation in the orchid roots. Then in this, pic, in this uh, figure you can observe the possible model of nutrient exchange in the orchid mycorrhizae. In the natural condition the orchid roots form the symbiosis with the orchid roots orchid mycorrhizal fungi and receive the nutrients from the germination and further protocom development. The IFA of the orchid mycorrhizal fungi can enter the orchid cells and form the coiled complexes called peltons. At non-photosynthetic stage, the orchid cells exports, export the ammonia to the mycorrhizal partner and receives the nitrogen, phosphorus, carbon for the seed germination. In addition to senescent, the senescent or digestion of peltons can release the nitrogen, phosphorus, carbon to the orchid cells when hyphal coils are digested. Further, the orchid develops to green leaves. The mycorrhizal fungi can obtain the photosynthetically fixed carbon as a reward after attaining the photosynthetic stage. However, the photosynthetic orchids may further receive the nitrogen from the fungal cells. They will not receive the nitrogen. They will only receive the phosphorus from the fungi. Then, uh, the orchids are mainly grouped into three categories based on the carbon nutrition. This carbon nutrition that is a fully autotropic. It means only it needs the fungal partner during the seed germination and further it will grow up its own. Then fully mycotropic. It means it solely depends on the fungi for its uh, successful completion of its life. Then partially mixotropic. It means it needs at the stage of seed germination and further growth, growth of plant also. So it is partially mixotropic. Then coming to the transfer of carbon from the fungi to plant, it primarily transfer in the form of trihalose, glucose and sucrose. Among the nitrogen, uh, coming to the nitrogen transfer, both terrestrial and epiphytic orchids absorb in the form of nitrate and uh, ammonia form. But in case of phosphorus uptake, it only depends on the fungi throughout the life. The fungus supply in the form of the organic phosphorus, in a, inorganic phosphorus, then phosphate compounds. Another way of getting the nutrients is by the way of digestion of these peltons. This process is also called as mycophagy. This we have already discussed. Then the digestion of the peltons after the 30 to 48, 30 to 48 hours after the formation in the orchid roots by the enzymes called urinase, chitinase, peptides, oxidase. This enzyme will help the digestion of the peltons in the orchid cells. Then moving on to the importance uh, role of endophytes in the defense mechanism. The plants will have the immune system to take up the adverse climatic conditions. But the endophytes will help or enhance the immune system by producing the phytohormones or the secondary metabolites to resist the stress 
in this table you can observe the chand and corcus in 2016 reported that the presence of flavonoids and other secondary metabolites act as an antioxidant and an antimicrobial in the orchids they will regulate the reactive oxygen species and other free radicals similarly the alsmiana and corcus in 2016 reported that catalase and other antioxidants have the capacity to reduce the uh, or scavenge the free radicals in the orchid plants further the tripia and co tripia and olmular in 2012 reported that the presence of superoxide and hydrogen peroxide activates the various proteins and these proteins act as a signaling molecules and they will reduce the dna damage protein dysfunction and the cell death and further the presence of peltop pestolop pestolopsis in the dendrobium officinale orchid it acts as the antifungal and antioxidant in the in this dendrobium orchid coming to the case study number two who and co-workers in 2011 conducted a study on mycorrhizal symbiosis enhances the phalaenopsis orchids growth and resistant to erbinia chrysanthemum at department of horticulture national taiwan university this phalaenopsis is one of the most popular orchid species in the international market but this has been hit by the major problems like the longer vegetative growth before the flowering it needs two years for flowering then the poor seed germination and high mortality rates at the nursery then another important one is disease outbreak during the cultivation one such is soft rot disease caused by the bot caused by the ervinia this is the bottleneck problem in the orchid cultivation then the main objective of this study is to know the orchid mycorrhizal fungus effect on the overcoming the pathogenicity of the ervinia chrysanthemum in this photo you can observe they have selected two phalaenopsis hybrids one is king car butterfly given the code as kc double one then red angel v31 which are in vitro cultured and in vitro cultured seedling and maintained in the growth chamber hence they have further they have selected the two two orchid endophytic fungi isolated uh, like uh, r02 that is ceratobacidium clone and r04 means isoctonia solani Further, the 0.1 gram of inoculum was applied to the roots while transplanting into the pots from the in vitro condition. Further, they assessed the growth of hybrids after the two months. The results were shown in this picture. Uh, the, the figure 7 indicates the plant, the plant growth of Phalaenopsis hybrid king or butterfly inoculated with the two isolates. In this picture, you can observe the result shows that the orchid mycorrhizal endophytes inoculated with the kc double one double one plant had larger plants larger leaf size compared to the control but in case of red angel you can see r02 has shows the larger leaf span compared to the control but not in the r04 because the researchers say the probable reason is low colonization of orchid mycorrhizal fungi and they are host specific further you can observe in the photo um, in this uh, graph the fresh weight of four month old phalaenopsis uh, the hybrid king of butterfly the both isolates enhanced their fresh weight compared to the control but in case of red angel the only r02 enhanced its fresh weight compared to the control and r04 then further to study the effect of ervinia they isolated the fully grown leaves that is a second leaf from the top so they applied directly so they directly um, made a circle or wound, they made a wounded site then artificially the circles were created for the inoculation of ervinia then the inoculated plants were kept in the growth chamber the area of soft rot infection was characterized by forming a water clear zone after 24 hours of inoculation the circle will grow bigger or spreads bigger in this picture you can observe the king cord butterfly the, in this hybrid r02 the disease has been reduced compared to the control on r04 compared to the control on r04 in this 
in this in this picture you can observe uh, r04 the the reduction of erwinia or the soft rot was seen in the r04 compared to the control and r0 r02 here the uh, soft rot development was prominent or develops grows bigger and bigger here the disease is severe compared to the r04 in this table table number 5 you can see the radius of soft rot development in the orchid mycorrhizal fungi inoculated with the inoculated with the two strains here the soft rot development was characterized by formation of a clear circle zone in the two orchid cultivars the the treatment the treatment r04 shown the significant reduction in the disease that is by forming the very less 5.7 mm soft rod disease development this is the radius of disease development in butterfly hybrid in red angel the r02 that is 4.3 mm soft rod disease development was seen compared to the control and r04 then we will move on to the next concept the role of endophytes in growth and development of orchids growth and development of orchids the plant hormones such as auxin cytokinin gibberellin ethylene play an important role in the plant growth and development the mycorrhizal association in mycorrhizal association will helps the production and regulation of these phytohormones the colonization of endophytes enhance both vegetatively and reproductively and they will induce early flowering improves the flower quality reduce the disease severity in the seedlings in this table you can observe the ang and coca in 2014 reported that the presence of these fungal isolates in the cymbidium species enhanced the indolastic acid production in the cymbidium orchid in turn this is, this will directly regulate the increase in the root length shoot length number of plantlets and promote the survival during the acclimatization process then further he reported that the this fungi in the dendrobium officinale which enhanced the salicylic acid indole 3 acetic acid zeatine and ascorbic acid these act as this these phytohormones they will regulate the growth and development in dendrobium species further the production of secondary metabolites and many phytohormones will stimulate the growth and development in many orchid species as as you can observe in this table then further we will see the another case study the case study number three Sean and Kovacus in 2018 conducted a study on isolation and characterization of plant growth promoting endophytic fungi from the roots of dendrobium moniliformi the research was conducted at the central department of botany Kathmandu, nepal this photo dendrobium moniliform is known for its ornamental and medicinal property but there but this species is under threat of extinction due to habitat loss and illegal trade. The main objective of this study is to study the association of the endophytes and to study the role of these endophytes in restoration program of this species. In this present study, they collected the roots of root segments of dendrobium and gone for the surface sterilization uh, with the use of tin 20 and sodium hypochlorite. Then further the root sections were cultured on the potato restos agar for the endophyte isolation. They, then individual fungal mycelia were collected gone for the complete DNA extraction by CTAP method then gone for the PCR amplification subsequently the sequencing of ITC region of ribosomal DNA. After getting the nucleotide sequence they compared with the existing database of NCBA website through the BLAST search tool technique. The results showed that out of out of 50 isolated strains, 9 different morphotypes were recovered from the culture. The majority of them belongs to the Ascomycotina phylum. Then the dominant genus and the species were observed was Fijarium. In this table, you can observe the molecular identification, molecular identification using the uh, nucleotide sequence compared with the existing database. They have given the nine, the nine different morphotypes the tentative affiliation from the from the library of ncba website you can observe the percentage of identification some are 100 percent identified some are 85 percent in this you can observe the dominant genus was fijarium 
in this picture you can observe the relative abundance of endophytic fungi after the isolation in the synthetic media. The fusarium is the dominant genus isolated in the roots of Dendrobium moniliformi. Then further they gone for the bio biochemical assay of each fungal isolate to estimate the concentration of auxin using the Salkowski reagent method. In this uh, figure number 13 you can observe the auxin synthesis by the endophytes with, or, with and without the induction of tryptophan. This is the precursor of auxin. The R10, R10 means the colototrichum shows the relatively higher concentration of indole acetic acid among the other isolates. Then the further gone for the identification of compounds present in the fungal extractants using the gas chromatography and mass spectroscopy analysis using the methanol extract. In this, in this uh, they have used the R11 and R13 that is fusarium isolates because why they have uh, studied means because the potent biochemicals and the essential oils what are the roles what are the roles in the plant and fungal communication so they detected these compounds in this table you can see they are potent biochemical molecules required for establishment of plant microbial association that is symbiotic association these molecules will enhance the association and uh, some of which are antimicrobial and antifungal these molecules were antimicrobial and antifungal and they also influence the plant microbial association then then further they gone for the they studied the effect of fungal elicitator on the growth assay of with the supplementation of fungal elicitator the fungal elicitator means it's prepared out of 10 day old fungal culture or the broth before that they have uh, used the protocol of Rhinchostelis retusa cultured on the MS media further they only supplemented the 10% fungal elicitator solution the results showed that in this picture you can observe R6 hypoxolia species and R11 leptospirulina species then R10 uh, colatotrichum species then R13 fusarium these fungal solutions show the significant growth and development in the significant growth and development in the Rhinchostelis retusa. Then in this graphs you can observe the physiological status of Rhinchostelis retusa plantlets supplemented with the different fungal elicitator. The mean number of roots and the shoots were highest in the R6, R6 isolate. Then the mean number of root and shoot length was highest in the R11. This is Colletotrichum species. Then the high, and the, after the quantification of total chlorophyll content, it is observed that in R10, that Colletotrichum species has, has been, this isolate have, have the potential to improve the total chlorophyll content in the plant, plant of this Rhinchostylis retusa. Then moving on to the next concept, the role of endophyte specificity in orchid rarity. How this specificity will reduce the orchid population. The rarity of many orchid species around the globe could be attributed to the decline in the occurrence of mycorrhizal fungi. As most of the orchid species appears to have high degree of specific to mycobians at the time of germination and the, during the later life stages, this specificity may be at genus level or maybe even at the species level hence the patchy distribution of the fungi in the nature is due to the absence of specific mycorrhizal fungi so to study this we'll we'll uh, go for the case study number four lakshmi and uh, duke cruz in 2018 conducted a experiment on in vitro symbiotic seed germination of vandas patholuta a vulnerable orchid of western guards in this research they conducted this research was conducted at the biotechnology and the bioinformatic division Jawaharlal Nehru tropical botanical garden and research institute Tiruvananthapuram here the researchers first collected the naturally grown vanda twitesi seedlings grown on the mangifera indica in this picture you can observe the roots were washed surface sterilized with the 5% sodium hypochlorite solution then further gone for the surface sterilization uh, then inoculated the fungal 
in inoculated on the fungal isolation media containing the tetrazolium and uh, streptomycin sulfate as the anti antibiotics to avoid the further bacterial contamination. For the subculture and the pododextrose agar media, then they gone for the mor morphological characters under the uh, morphological characterization under the contrast micros contrast microscope followed by the molecular characterization was performed by isolating the DNA from the internal transcribed spacer. The DNA was extracted using the CTAB method. Then uh, the nucleotide sequencing was further done and they compared with the existing database of NCBI using the blood search tool technique. This result showed that 92% of the similarity of the isolate with the Ceratobacidium clone VT3 clone. In this figure you can observe the morphological character of Ceratobacidium clone that is presence of monolithic cells, basidium, basidiospores and binucleated stage of the Ceratobacidium. Then further, they gone for the symbiotic seed germination test with the Vandas white seed. They got the very good result. This is the another research paper. But they have a thought of this, this fungi may be species specific to white seed. To confirm that they led in another experiment to by co-culturing the Ceratobacidium clone and Vandas petaluta seeds. Here this is also a vulnerable orchid. This Vandas petaluta is also a vulnerable orchid species and due to habitat degradation and over collection and it is endemic to western guards according to ICN. Then symbiotic seed germination uh, was done. The capsules were washed, surface sterilization was done. Then the capsules were split open and inoculated on the oatmeal agar media on the sterile Watsman filter paper. Then the seed germination, the seedling development was scored on 0 to 6 scale. This in this scale you can observe 0 means no germination, 1 means embryo, so embryo development, and further growth and development was uh, seen in the 0 to 7 scale, incremental scale. Then further the results were in the table number 9 depicts that the symbiotic germination of seeds cultured on the oatmeal agar media inoculated with the symbiotic fungi VT3 clone. In this picture you can observe initially at the at the seventh day and the embryos were just stolen and the embryos were just stolen and the testo was intact. In the second you can see the emergence of first protomeristem then emergence of first true leaf, second true leaf, then complete development of plant within the 60 days compared to the control, compared, within, compared to the control. Then in this picture you can observe the matured and dried seed and stolen embryo, then protocoms, protocoms of uh, Vandas patholuta and the meristems and the emergence of first leaf, rooting, and the transversal section of root showing the colonization in the in vitro condition. Then we will see the inference. What is the inference from this study? The results obtained in this study revealed that the symbiotic fungus VT3 clone from the Vandas white sea is effectively is equally effective for the symbiotic seed germination of Vandas patholuta also. Then however the available literature suggests that white sea and patholuta never had a common habitats either in India or Sri Lanka. Therefore, the base of association is probably the genetic rather than the environmental factors. Thus, the symbiotic activity of VT3 in the Vanda species is also possible. In other Vanda species also, it, it supports the seed germination. This strain is not species specific from this result outcome. This is not species specific, may support the seed germination in other Vanda orchid species as well. Then, then we will move on to the next important concept importance of these orchid endophytic fungi in conservation and restoration program the threat to the survival of the orchids in the nature is alarming in spite of all these significant advances in the understanding the ecology of the orchids it is important to note that only three percent of the global orchid population has been subjected to iucn red list assessment in that 56% of these are under endangered or threatened categories. In spite of using the modern biotechnological tools like plant tissue culture is significantly handicapped by the high mortality rate in in vitro plantlets when transferred to the field. So to achieve the end of mass propagation, uh, use of endophytes as a biological tool holds a much promise. The orchids 
are the first flowering plants were commercially propagated through seeds and tissue culture. Thus, the plant tissue culture technique used to conserve the endangered plant species as well as the mass propagation of high quality disease free genetically identical plants and the production of secondary metabolites holds the much promise not just for the conservation of endangered species but also for production of the species in the demand in the present market demand in the large quantity so the symbiotic seed germination technique is a practical merit for the conservation of highly important and threatened orchid species then we'll see another case study case study number agarwal and co-workers in 2012 conducted a study on in vitro symbiotic seed germination and molecular characterization of associated endophytic fungi in the commercially important and endangered Indian orchid Vanda Koerla. This study was conducted at the Department of Botany, Punjab University of Punjab University, Chandigarh. This Vanda Koerla is commonly known as Blue Vanda. It is floriculturally important and endangered species. Then this is endemic to Meghalaya and Manipur state of India. The flowers were known to have the longer shelf life. That is two to three months apart from this it has been used as the progenitor for the vast variety of remarkable hybrids in the present market ethnobotanically the flowers used for worship and the juice of the leaves are used for used as a medicine however the extensive cult extensive cultivation and habitat degradation led to the decline of the population it has been listed in the endangered endangered in the red data book of india and iucn category and imposed the ban on international trade by sites this is the international organization which will control the uh, trade of endangered species hence the present study was planned to re-establish the in vitro symbiotically grown uh, seedlings back into the natural ecosystem this is moreover the restoration program so that the population dynamics can be maintained in the wild uh, in this work involved, the works involve the isolation, identification of the mycorrhizal fungi in the Vanda Corolla, both by conventional and molecular technique. So, re-establishing the in vitro symbiotically seed germination, they want to establish a protocol and restoration program. Initially, they isolated the roots. Uh, initially, the roots were procured from the naturally grown plants of Vanda Corolla in the vicinity of Manipur. The roots were washed, stained. And observed the, under the stereo microscope. The presence of fungal colonization observed under the stereo microscope in the roots, uh, in the cortical roots of orchid. Then this demonstrated that the species is mycoheterotropic at the adulthood. It requires the endophytic fungi for its growth and development. So then they inoculated the fungal this peltons in the fungal isolation media and for the subculture in the potato dextrose agar media then they gone for the fungal identification through morph morphological and molecular technique uh, this process i have been already explained that is uh, they isolated the itc region of ribosomal dna obtained the nucleotide sequence and they further compared the existing database of ncba data database using the blast search tool technique then they they gone for the phylogenic tree construction using the mega pro program finally revealed that the associated endophyte was rhizotonia z but this was originally described as the causal agent of the ear rot in the maze this rhizotonia is well known for its widely distributed as a pathogen or a saprophyte but here the mycorrhizal fungi of an orchid think of its think of its ability of the orchid and its internal mechanism uh, in uh, tolerating this pathogenicity then uh, further in this picture you can observe the roots the flowering plants and here the colonization of uh, fungi into the seeds of vanda coirla you can observe all these factors then they further gone for the symbiotic seed germination the capsules were washed in the surface sterilization using the mercury chloride. The seeds were spread over the surface of the sterile watchman paper, which is kept on the oatmeal agar media. Then eight replications were maintained. The seed germination and seed development was assessed using the scale, assessed using the scale of 0 to 4, 0 to 4, outlined by the Zettler and Magzik. Then 
uh, have told you already the they have established the phylogenetic tree in this picture you can observe this is very close to the rhizoctonia z according to the phylogenetic tree then this is the in table number 10 depicts that the uh, germination seed germination and development was assessed using the scale of 0 to 4 outlined by the zettler and magnix in 1998 then further in the table number 20 you can observe the healthy green protocoms with a leaf primordia then the protocoms with a leaf under roots then symbiotically raised the seedling in the small earthworm pot with the mixture of charcoal bricks then coir pith then reintroduction into the natural habitat after the one year uh, successful growth in the greenhouse in this in this in this picture you can observe then they transfer the well-grown seedling into a, a small earthworm pots containing the mixture of brick charcoal coir pith and kept for the acclimatization in the greenhouse then they gone for the reintroduction program then they gone for the reintroduction program into the natural habitat well acclimatized plants were reintroduced into the natural ecosystem in the vicinity of the manipur and the mango trees out of 29 plants 23 plants were grown well about 80 percent of the establishment rate hence the present study hence the present study in this uh, table number 11 you can observe the in vitro uh, germination and the developmental stages of seeds of vanda coerla with the help of this mycorrhizae here the complete plantlet development was observed observed uh, with a success rate of 96 percent the seed germination rate was 96 percent and complete plant was developed up to the stage four with the establishment of two to three leaves and one to two roots this is the complete establishment rate uh, rates then what is the inference of this study the current study concluded that a successful protocol development for the reintroduction of a threatened and endangered orchid species that is vanda querla using its own mycorrhizae in vitro this is the one of the successful protocol development in the indian subcontinent at the first time then finally i would like to conclude my seminar by saying orchid mycorrhizal endophytes helps in all the aspect of the life stages of orchid starting from the seed germination protocom development reaching the adulthood nutrient uptake they also provide the carbon plant growth promoting substances disease tolerance capacity to the orchid hence these endophytes are crucial in the reintroduction and restoration of orchid population into their natural habitat so the more focus has to be given on the line of understanding the symbiotic association of orchids and the endophytes for the future use this may be the very key and hot topic for research thank you thank you one and all for your patience and time thank you